friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India this is a case of phacolytic glaucoma the patient presented with pain redness vomiting and high intraocular pressure IOP was 56 millimeter of mercury with intravenous mannitol and other anti glaucoma medications the pressure has come down to 36 millimeter of mercury and I have taken up the case for surgery. This is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. And now I take a 23G Simcoe cannula and aspirate the tarbit aqueous. Lens matter has leaked out through the anterior capsule and the aqueous humor has become turbid. So the turbid aqueous is washed out and now we can see the iris details clearly. And now an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber Beneath this air bubble, tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule of this hypermature Morgagnian cataract. This is a bit of adrenaline. This may help in maintaining the dilatation of the people and it may cause some dilatation, some more dilatation. But in this case, it has not dilated the people to a significant extent. Still, a little bit dilatation has occurred owing to adrenaline. And now this is visco. This is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Now this is a, a side port on the right side of the main incision about 3 o'clock hours away. This is another side port on the left side of the main incision about same distance away. Now a 26 gauge bent needle cystitome is taken. The needle is introduced through the right side port and the anterior capsule is incised. At this time we can judge genular strength. In this case genule appears ok. Some milky fluid has come out. Aspirated the milky fluid through the incision And now visco is injected. The antechamber is filled up. And now I'm going to do rexes with this utrita forceps. Hold the capsule tag and to get an adequate size rexes. I'm going very close to the margin of the dilated pupil. The capsule is being guided anti-clockwise and a very nice circular rexis of about 5 millimeter has been obtained. We don't need hydro dissection just inject visco and this is the time to introduce the phaco needle in the anterior chamber this is a free floating nucleus and we cannot hold the nucleus with bevel up so I am going to engage the teeth bevel down gets occluded immediately going through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator 
and here it is I got a nice crack now turn the teeth to the left side hold the lens mask to the left go through it for a distance and get another nice crack and now I'm going to emulsify this piece it is not free but I got a chunk of it was emulsified so in this case my plan is to eat off this idli like substance by several bites idli is a very good south indian breakfast and i like it very much the idli is exactly like this lens anterior curvature of idli is less posterior curvature of idli is more just like this lens mass so bit by bit uh, I am eating this hypermature morgagnian nucleus FECO power used is 60 percent flow rate is 45 ml per minute vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury since the jonule appeared normal in this case I didn't think of using IOL as scaffold for emulsifying the last piece the last piece has been emulsified very safely you can see a bit of nucleus just in front of the left side board my plan is to remove that first before that I'm just retracting the iris all around to see if I need to do any cortical cleanup anywhere and I when I retract the 12 o'clock iris I find some cortex sub incisionally and now I introduce the 23G Simco and this small piece of nucleus is scotted out now I go through the left side port and try to aspirate the sub incisional cortex but nothing came out and now 2% SPMC is injected to fill up the capsular bag as well as the anterior chamber and then a uh, hydrophilic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens is being implanted in the capsular bag the main incision has been enlarged a little bit which has not been shown the lens is delivered slowly and it goes into the capsular bag the lens is dialed and now is the time to remove the visco thoroughly whenever we use viscoelastic substance for implanting an intraocular lens we must 
dedicate some quality time to remove the visco from the anterior chamber as well as from the capsular bag. We must go behind the eye well in this way, irrigate the capsular bag for some time and then aspirate for some time. The posterior chamber is washed out, antechamber, antechamber angle is washed out. So a nice cleaning of visco has to be done if we want a quiet eye next day. If there is retained visco, stemmy corneal edema can develop, the patient can feel even pain and the patient cannot see well. So to avoid all these we must clean visco thoroughly if we have used it for implantation of the intraocular lens. When the people is small I usually use visco to implant the intraocular lens. At this moment I am using the irrigating proof to clean the visco and now using both irrigation and aspiration so I have spent about two minutes time for cleaning of the visco. Friends, we cannot hurry up in complicated cases. We must have a lot of patience whenever we are doing a complicated case. In routine cases, automatically the surgical procedure becomes fast. We save a lot of time when we do routine cases but complicated cases though the patient's paying capability may not be good we have to give quality time to these patients by this time the side ports have been closed hydrating corneal stroma now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. At this time any visco sticking to the corneal endothelium is removed. The antechamber is nicely formed. Integrity of all the wounds are checked few drops of moxie is applied and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Wish not it were easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenges. Wish for more wisdom. Thank you very much for your attention.